Hi there, my name is Mark Hopkins and welcome to the Business Revolution podcast. Every week, TechKey will bring you a podcast. We either are talking to business revolutionaries around the world doing things that are going to inspire and motivate you, things that are going to be changing the way that you see the world and changing how you live your life. And also, Rob and I will be chatting to you, sharing our thoughts and feelings, knowledge, experience of what we're observing with clients and with TechKey that, again, are things that you can practically change into your business and life on a daily basis. Today, the podcast is brought to you by the Business Revolutionary Club. Now, the Business Revolutionary Club is Ted Key's flagship business coaching product. And not only is it its flagship product, it's also free. So that's right. For every fortnight, you get free content. You get webinars. You get podcasts. You get book reviews. You get articles. You get blogs. You get vlogs. You get the opportunity to get even more free content business coaching, you get the opportunity to get free one-to-one business coaching every week valued at around $39,000. All that and it's free. There's no catches, no credit cards, no commitment. And as we say, there are no catches. So this podcast is brought to you by the Business Revolutionary Club. So today's podcast, um, I would like to talk to you about staying true. And um, it's an interesting couple of words when you put it together, because when you say staying true, then all you're really implying is staying the course. You're implying that you're staying true to what you believe in and what you want to achieve in life. But sometimes it's not that easy. We've all had those experiences where you put your heart and soul into something and it just doesn't end as you imagined it. You've had all those dreams. You've had your imagination has run wild. You've identified all the upside of what you've done and what you're going to achieve. And some of us might have already spent the money in our head that we're going to earn from what we're going to what we're going to build. And then it all comes crashing down. How do we recover from that? How do we stay true to our journey? And the reason I want to talk about that is I get frustrated when I observe, when I read, when I'm listening to podcasts or when I listen to uh, YouTube videos. Whenever I'm listening or watching things and I hear these things about I made this money, I achieved this, I did this, aren't I brilliant? Copy me to success and you will do this. If you do this, you will earn a million dollars in your first month. It's an absolute load of rubbish. I honestly don't believe in it. I don't believe in it because unless they're those people you're listening to are happy to be brave and to be vulnerable, they'll admit that it's taken them 5, 10, 15 years to get to the position that they're at now. There are no quick wins. Yes, there's the lottery. There are certain bets you can make. I was reading an article uh, article today about a lady in America who made, a, I think it was a 13 or an $18 bet on a horse race and she walked away with $1.2 million. So yes, you can make a million dollars in a very short space of time, but a lot of it is through gambling. And gambling is not the most sustainable way to run your life or your business. I used to coach and I still coach a lot of hockey. And in hockey, it is a process. It is a long build up where you're getting a group of individuals to buy into a strategy to normally to go and compete uh, at the end of a two year cycle at a prestigious tournament be it uh, Olympics, uh, Commonwealth Games, a World Cup, a European Championships, whatever the tournament is, you spend all your time and effort and energy building up towards this tournament. And it's the same as we do in business. We plan our future. We identify the products. We identify our, co- our customers. And we spend all that time and effort building and working towards selling that product. And it's the same as the outcome in hockey. The outcome of hockey is selling a brand to a group of individuals, for them to buy in, for them to execute it, and for us to win. 
And whatever your definition of win is, your first sale, your hundredth sale, your thousandth sale, your first $5,000 in your bank account, your being um, not making a loss at the end of year one, whatever your definition of success are, it doesn't always go to plan. And it doesn't always get the outcome that you want. I've coached in many a tournament where we set our targets and we've just fallen short or we've really crashed. And the day after is the worst feeling. It's the feeling where you've just acknowledged or recognized that you've spent two years building towards something and it hasn't worked. It just hasn't played off. You haven't got the results. You haven't walked away with that gold medal that you've been aspiring to. The day after is the worst day. And it's important that we recognize and we go through those pains of grief and we go through those pains of loss where you accept that it's not the worst day. But too many of us have plan B's in our mind. So we go with a plan A and if plan A doesn't work, plan B will kick in. Now, I'm always very nervous around plan B's because as with hockey, two years is not a long time to affect change. So you may not succeed what you wanted to succeed in your first cycle, but you've got all that groundwork in place now. The foundations have been laid down for your second tournament and your second tournament's in another two years. Now, if after your first tournament, you're going, well, plan A didn't work, I'm going to switch straight away to plan B. Two things are going to happen. One thing will happen that during the two years as you're working on plan A, subconsciously, you always know you've got plan B just in case. Now, if you live through that where you know you've got your backup plan, you've got your fail safe that you can eject. It's the same thing where um, you get told to push yourself physically and you say, do as many press ups as you possibly can. Now, you know you can do as many as you can, but you know plan B is, well, what's the worst that's going to happen? Well, if I don't do that number, then I'm just going to stop and, yeah, I might get shouted out by my trainer or whatever, but there is a plan B. Now, if your life depends on, on the number of presses, I'm pretty convinced that you do not have a plan B now. So your plan A is do as many as you possibly can. And I'm pretty sure the difference between the scenario where you know you've got a plan B and the scenario where you've only got a plan A will be quite significant. I think you could do a lot more press-ups without a plan B in place. And that's the same challenge that we have to have in business and we have to have in sport is sometimes you just need to forget about plan B. Do not have a plan B, only have a plan A. And that plan A, you are going to dictate absolute everything to. There's no going to be, well, if this doesn't fail, I can always. There's not going to be that. Or I can go back to my old job if it tries. That's not a plan B. Your whole mentality and your mindset should be around plan A. There is no plan B, ladies and gentlemen. Focus all your efforts and energy on plan A. Stay true to what you believe in. You are going to have bad days. You're going to have those days where clients look at you and say no. I'm pretty sure there is a number of people listening to this podcast who have gone out to get investment. And if they'd have given up after the first one person who said no, or 10, or 50, or 100 then have just given up. And we all know stories of businesses who had to go through 150 no's before they got that one yes. And that one yes has changed their world, but not only their world, it's changed our world as we see it. So what gets in the way of staying true? Well, we've all probably had those uh, roommates that we just don't like. They're nagging, they're in noise, they're lazy, they're dirty, they're all the things that would just wind us up. Go back now and think about that roommate who you're just so glad you don't live with anymore. And nine times out of ten, you're associating that roommate with some negative. It could be negative things, it could be negative noise, it could be nagging. I'd like you to pause for two seconds now and just listen. How comfortable are you with that silence or is something filling that silence? My guess is that silence has been filled by your brain going, what's he doing? Why is he doing this? This doesn't make any sense. This is rubbish. This is stupid. I think you've just got that noise in your head. 
Maybe you're now arguing with yourself in your head. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. This is rubbish. No, it's not. That's how we live our life. We live our life constantly with this roommate in our head. This person who constantly talks to us, who gives a running commentary of everything we're doing. And it stops us doing things that we want to do. I saw someone today wearing this really, really cool top. And I wanted to go up to them and just, A, say, that is such, I haven't seen such a cool shirt in a long, long time. And then B, where did you get it from? And for some stupid reason, my inner voice was going, nah, don't do that. They'll just embarrass them. Don't do that, don't do that. So I didn't do it. And I'm really annoyed at myself as I walked away and I turned around and ignored the inner voice and I turned around to go and find them and I'd lost them. But you end up arguing with yourself. You go into that debate with yourself. Do it. No, don't do it. Do it. Don't do it. Do it. Don't do it. And you've got to make sure the right one wins. So there's two things that happens when you don't stay true. When you don't stay true, it's because you're letting your inner voice admit defeat. That thing is dictating your actions. It's telling you that you've failed. After two years of dedicating everything, you've failed. Well, it depends what you're defining failure or success at and depending what the future learnings are that are coming out of it. We are going to have doors shut in our face. Ladies and gentlemen, it is going to happen. We are going to have people who don't like your product. And that is good. It's telling you that you're actually starting to challenge things. You're getting information. The greatest information you're getting is after you hear the no, ask the question, just out of interest in my learning, what is it about the product that you didn't like? Start embracing rejections. Start enjoying getting no's. Get comfortable getting a no. See it as the biggest learning opportunity that you can have. By doing that and embracing no's, you are going to stay true. Now, I'm not saying that you walk blindly down an alley where everyone else is pointing out and telling you you're rubbish, you've got no idea, it's never going to work. You've got to listen. You've got to listen for those, those little bits of positivity as well as the negativity to get a balance. What you cannot do or can, you can do, but you just be very conscious of doing it, is just going down a route that is not going to lead somewhere. Now, I'm not saying you don't have big, audacious goals. I'm not saying that you think of crazy stuff. And if people are going, that's mad, then it's probably quite cool because it's doing something that's challenging their status quo. But recognise that along the journey, you are going to have those hiccups. You are going to have those falls. You're going to have those failures. You're going to have those things that don't go to plan. And it is tough. It is tough to come home after a day like that and go, we've all had it. We've all had those days where you go out with such high expectations and nothing works. Nothing comes off as you expect it, as you want it to be. And it is tough. But see those as massive learning opportunities. See those to understand why it was tough. Why didn't it go as you anticipated? What did you do wrong? What do you need to change to enhance the proposition, to enhance the experience, to get the yeses? And then go out the next day and stay true to the course that you've set yourself. Focus only on plan A. Because an overnight success is really not an overnight success. An overnight success is 10 years of hard work behind before that one opportunity that turned them in somebody who knew one knew, no one knew before to someone that everyone's talking about. They're not an overnight success. They're a 10 year success just noticed once. And that's all your business needs to have. It needs to have the foundations in place to be noticed once. That one client who's going to change your whole business. That one customer who's going to talk about your service you've provided to somebody else who then comes along with the order of your dreams. So stay true to what you believe in. Stay true to your business. Stay true to plan. Not A, just plan. Stay true to your plan. Commit to your plan. And enjoy the no's as well as the yeses. See the no's as the opportunity to learn. So ladies and gents, this podcast has been brought to you by the Business Revolutionary Club, a free online business coaching membership that gives you access to world-class content knowledge every fortnight. 
You can read all about it in the description below this podcast. You can sign up with just your name and your email address. It will open up doors that you've never known has been open. I hope you enjoyed this podcast and we'll be speaking to you very, very shortly.